Prior to Prohibition, there were two factions. There was the Boston family and there was the Providence family. And these were real Cosa Nostra groups, you know, families at that point in time. And they went through the normal stuff that you go through, you know, who got into a war, who got killed, you know, bootlegging and, you know, the normal stuff that happens in every Cosa Nostra family. It happened in the Colombos, happened in the Genovese. It happens everywhere. This is the nature of the life. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. I am headed to Napa Valley pretty soon. I love Napa Valley. I love just the restaurants, the wine tastings. Great wine has been in my family since, uh, gosh, since I'm 10 years old. My grandfather used to make it in the basement and serve it to all of us. Just love it. You know, what could I do? It's a, it's a great drink and it's always a family gathering that we enjoy wine on. The reason I have the bottle here and my book is because there's been an increased demand with all this stuff going on in the world, with this crazy government that we have, you know, the re with the Republicans unable to uh, elect a Speaker of the House, unbelievable, you know, and all the strife going on into the world. I gotta tell you people, I mean, how does it feel having these people govern us? They can't seem to get their own act together, you know, and, and, and they're in charge of us. We got to pray and put the right people in office, people. I keep telling you all the time, you read my book, Mafia Democracy, you can go on Amazon, get it, and I think there's a link here to get it here. It'll explain to you why there is dysfunction in Washington. And you're going to agree with it. How do I know that? Because everybody else is agreeing with it. Everybody. It's bipartisan, down the middle. I'm not talking Democrat, Republican. I'm talking about the system, the operation of government, how Machiavellian it is, how mob-like it is, and that's why in many ways it's dysfunctional. When things in life become all about money and power and control, we're in trouble. And that's the way it is today. Face the facts. Don't cover for anybody. Don't cover for Trump. Don't cover for Biden. Don't cover for anyone. We the people have a voice and we're the ones that we should be concerned about. Us, our families, our communities, our livelihoods, our lifestyles. And if people are not doing the job governing us properly, we should dispose of them. What I mean by that is get them out of office, vote them out. Doesn't matter who they are, get rid of them because we deserve better. We're the backbone of this country. We work, we pay taxes taxes. We do our thing. We are the backbone of this country. We deserve a good living environment. That's it. And it's our leadership that has to provide that, provide us with the opportunity for us to create that kind of environment. That's what it's all about. As far as the wine, we're going to be doing uh, some really Christmas holiday specials coming up. We're now in 41 states. We just took on a huge account. I can't announce it yet, but we're going to be in a lot of stores all over the country. Very excited about that. In major states, we're in Canada now. We have accounts there. Louisiana, we just put that on. A lot of good stuff going on. And I just came back from Australia recently, and we're going to be in Australia too. So things are going great. You know, love that. Very good. So keep your eye out on it, because if you like wine, if you enjoy it, if you think it's a family drink, if you want to enjoy it around the dinner table come uh, holiday season, keep your eye. We're going to be giving some specials, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So I want to get a couple of things out of the way. Today I'm going to talk about a date that I have coming up December 30th. I'm going to be in Providence, Rhode Island. It's a ticketed event, an evening with Michael Francis. We're going to have a great time like we always do at all of these events. Had a great time at two of them in um, Melbourne and Sydney. People in Australia are just wonderful. They really love this stuff. We had a great time. You know, we took photographs, did a Q&A, great questions that came from uh, the Australian population there. Just loved it. And we always have great times at these events. So watch for it. December 30th, you can get, uh, uh, there's a link below here for tickets. You can jump on and get some tickets. Uh, I think a lot of them have been sold already. We got some time yet, but uh, look forward to that. It's just before New Year's, so it's going to be fun. You know, it's holiday. You're going to be in the holiday season, you know, uh, uh, spirit, I would say, and uh, I know we're going to have a lot of fun. And then we're going to talk today a little bit about the uh, mob, mafia, I would say. I hate to use that word for some reason. I don't know. I'm always uncomfortable when I say mafia. I feel better with Cosa Nostra. But we're going to talk
talk about, you know, Cosa Nostra in um, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and Boston just briefly, just briefly, because I'm going to save most of it for that evening. There's a great history there. When I say great, as it applies to the mob, you know, it's a real, you know, real reality in, uh, in both of those cities. But before we get into that, let me say one thing. I've been getting a lot of comments about the um, sit down I had with Sammy. Uh, what's it called? Back of the room or something with Sammy? And a lot of comments, most of them very positive. And Sammy's been saying, Mike, we're getting such positive comments. As a matter of fact, many people are nominating us for president and vice president. Some want, more want Sammy to be the president because I think I asked him a question, what will you do if you're the president of this country, and then me as the vice president, eh, we'll see, you know, <laughs> either one of us. It's not going to happen, so don't worry about it. It's just fantasy. But uh, most of the comments have been very, very good. Glad you enjoyed it. And I want to clear this up. I don't get paid for this. Sammy and I are not making any money on this. We put it up on YouTube. He put it on YouTube. It's called Back of the Room. Sorry. You can go to his site and watch it now. We don't get paid for this. And let me clarify this also. Sammy doesn't need Michael Francis, and Michael Francis doesn't need Sammy. We've had our discussions. We've had our little, you know, bouts. I'm sure many of you have seen that with Patrick Bed David. And then we've, you know, cleared that up, and now we have a relationship, you know? Uh, Sammy has his business. I have mine. But... You know, people that make comments, oh, you know, we know who to align ourselves with to make money. Nonsense. Nobody's doing it for the money. We, I'm not, and Sammy isn't either, because we're not selling this thing. You know, we had that thing with Patrick Bed David. This is not for sale. You know, look, people, I have spoken with a lot of the guys that have YouTube channels right now. Most of them I didn't know before. Didn't know any of them. You know, and there's a lot of controversy going around. I don't engage in any of that. I don't. And I'm not judgmental towards people. I'm not getting involved in any of that. I think those of you that follow me know that that's not my deal. It's not my thing. I don't intend to engage in it, nor have I in the past. You know, everybody has a right to do their own thing. They want to get on there. They have a platform. YouTube is an open forum. Do whatever you feel you think you need to do on your platform, because basically we're entertaining people. You know, we're having a voice. We're giving our opinions. We're telling stories. And it's an open forum. Anybody can do whatever they choose to do. And if I want to do it with Sammy, I'm going to do it with Sammy. Nobody's going to tell me not to. If I make that choice, I'll do it. If I want to do it with Dominic or, or, or Mikey Scars or anybody, I'm going to do it. Nobody's going to tell me any different. I'll do it because I want to do it, because I choose to do it. And that's it. So I hope we clarify that. And I'm only, you know, responding to a couple of the comments that I get. But I think it's important to clarify some of these things. And that's it. And I'm not taking a position on anything that anybody's saying about anybody. Because again, I don't get involved in that. Let's switch over to Boston and Providence. You know, prior to um, Prohibition, there were two factions. There was the Boston family and there was the Providence family. And these were real Cosa Nostra groups, you know, families at that point in time. And they went through the normal stuff that you go through, you know, who got into a war, who got killed, you know, bootlegging and... You know, the normal stuff that happens in every Cosa Nostra family. It happened in the Colombos, happened in the Genovese, happened in the Lucchese, the Bonanos. It's going to happen all the time. Gambinos, of course. It happened, uh, you know, in Philadelphia. It happens everywhere. This is the nature of the life. People get killed. Illegal activity goes on. It happens. So there are wars, there are, you know, times of peace. That's the nature of the beast. But, you know, the fact is that we did have, when I say we, I'm encompassing all the Cosa Nostra throughout this country, we did have a very powerful presence and a powerful influence. Many times it was not good, and sometimes it was good. Listen, for the CIA to come to us for help, you know we had to have authority and we had to have power. For Joseph Kennedy to come to us for help, to get his son elected, you know that we had to have power. You know that we had to have influence. And of course, if you're controlling the unions in this country, I've said this many times, you control the unions, for the most part, you control a good part of the country, especially when it comes to politics, because what do all politicians want? All of them, every single one of them. They want votes and they want money. Now, you control the Teamsters, two and a half million people, two and a half million votes or a good percentage of them and their families, right? Big numbers. You have pension funds, hundreds of millions of dollars to donate to campaigns. So we had that when we controlled the union. So we were a powerful force. I don't know that, you know, there's any other organized crime group in America for sure that had that kind of juice, that kind of power, that kind of influence 
okay? That kind of control in this country. Now, in Mexico, the cartels have that. They may even have more, because many of them govern parts of that country. We didn't do that. We just had a lot of power and influence. And getting back to Boston and Providence, two very real families uh, that had a lot of control in those two cities, and the same stuff went on. You know, there was power. I'm not gonna name the bosses at that time, not gonna name the guys that got murdered, who got killed, whatever. But there was a big presence. And you know, presence, I should say. And I love both of those cities. I love Boston. Boston's a great city. I'm not a Red Sox fan. I am to a degree a New England Patriot fan because I visit I visited both teams actually as part of what I do, you know, with respect to gambling, relationships, the leagues call on me, and I've given uh, you know the benefit of my expertise and experience and knowledge to all the players. But I happen to love the guys in New England. Sorry, Bill Belichick, great guy. His staff, great people. I love those guys. I spent a lot of time with them. And yes, I am a Jets fan, but you know, that has nothing to do with liking the people. You know, I just enjoy them. I was there this year and uh, just, just great people. Belichick's a wonderful guy and his staff, they're great. He has one Armenian person there that uh, happens to love my wine. So, you know, good stuff. But, um, I love those two cities. And Providence, great. You know, really, really great. I mean, you know, I've been there. There's a big Italian presence there. Restaurants are great, you know, and, uh, and I love both cities. And I have met with some of the uh, men that were involved in life during that time. Now, in 1932, I believe the uh, two factions, Boston and Providence, they kind of merged and it became one family one cousin Oster family. That was in 1932. And then there was a history of leadership and so on and so forth. And then in 1952, I think the most famous, infamous name associated with that crew was Raymond Petriarca. And he ruled that family for quite some time. I never met Raymond. I knew people that knew him. I was around him, but he, he ruled the family uh, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, he had a reputation. You know, they, some people feared him. They said he was a pretty ruthless guy. I'm only saying what I've heard and what I've known and the things I've heard on the street about him, things I heard from guys that did some time with him. Um, I think he got convicted of murder. I think he had a 10-year sentence, did a, did a bunch of time on that. I think he also got indicted again after he got out for another murder beef. Didn't know him, but he ruled with an iron fist, and people I know were in fear of him. And uh, his underboss at the time was a fellow by the name of Jerry Angelo. And I knew Angelo. I met him a couple of times. We had some discussions about the gas business and things that were going on. Uh, in his part of the, uh, of the country. And I'm not gonna get into the details of that, but I like Jerry very, very much. Uh, as you know, there was a, a beef with uh, Jerry and um, yeah, and I'm sure you heard his name mentioned quite a bit with respect to Whitey Bulger because uh, there was a feud at that time. And I think Angelo, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a fact, I'm not gonna state it if it's not, but I'm pretty sure it's a fact that Angelo put a hit out on Whitey Bulger when he found out that he was an informant. And I knew Jerry uh, very, very well. Great guy uh, until he passed away, I think in 2007. He had his trouble with the law like all of us. But there's a great history there and we're gonna talk about that on December 30th. Among other things, I always give my life story. We always have a Q and A. We always do a VIP section where we take pictures, have a drink together. We do all of that. And it's a great theater from what I understand. Tickets are on sale. So if you wanna hear the history of the New England mob back then and up until today, make sure you get, uh, you get your seat for that evening, December 30th, just before the holiday season, just before New Year's. Everybody hopefully is gonna be in a festive mood if things are okay in the world. Um, that's what we hope and pray for. Uh, many of you have seen, I'm sure, my video that uh, I spoke about what's going on in Israel and uh, everybody has to you know, pay attention to that. You can't help it, it's everywhere. But we're gonna have a great night. So December 30th, you're gonna hear about the New England mob, buy your tickets, we're gonna spend some good time together. So that's it for today, my friends. How do I always leave you? Same way. It's never going to change no matter where I am because this is how I feel. Be safe because we don't know who's in our midst here in this country. And as things heat up, we have to be even more conscious of our surroundings, our malls, our schools, our concerts, our airports. Be attentive to your surroundings. I tell my children that, especially my youngest daughter. She lives with me. Precious, I love her to death. Watch when you go out because we enjoy our freedom here in the United States. But things can happen when people are in your midst. So be safe. Be healthy. Of course, you know, I always preach that. I live 
in a house of healthiness. You know, my wife, my daughter, they're all so healthy. My dog is barking, but hey, that's normal life, right? Be safe, be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And people, when I say that, I really mean it. Because, you know, I'm going to tell you this. As a Christian, we don't want our worst enemy uh, to enter hell. And I mean that. And why do we feel that way? Because Jesus Christ showed us the ultimate forgiveness. Famous, the, the, the most wonderful words ever spoken ever spoken about forgiveness were from Jesus. His last few words on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. One of the 10 most beautiful, wonderful uh, words that were ever spoken. So forgive people, it's important. And when I say this to you, we don't want our worst enemies to go to hell. Everybody, everybody should be redeemed. That's how we feel. Be safe, be healthy. God bless every one of you. Yes, I'll see you next time.